this video is to tell you how to use the electrolytic cell experiment. There are several pieces of equipment that actually live on the bench. There is a power supply. There is the electrolyzer. This is where you will actually be fill this up with water and uh, electrolyzing it to produce hydrogen and oxygen. The hydrogen and oxygen will actually be stored temporarily in the gasometer. That's this particular device here. And then the gases produced will be fed into a fuel cell and you'll be getting electricity back out of it. You'll be measuring how much the amps and the volts concern it takes to split water apart. And then when the water is reproduced by being combined, hydrogen and oxygen in the fuel cell, you'll be measuring the amount of energy that is produced there. Now, the, there's other fairly simple equipment. However, the most exotic chemical you'll be using is water. And the water you need to get is not the usual distilled water reverse osmosis. You need to get deionized water. You need to use deionized water, not reverse osmosis water. And you get that from the north corner of Wahlberg 202. That's this. It's plumbed like uh, distilled water, but it then passes through this deionizing column. And you can collect this stuff in a bottle and take it back to the uh, electrolysis equipment in Wahlberg 203. Now that you have the water, there are several things that you need to do with it to fill up. The first thing to do is to fill up the electrolyzer. We have a funnel for you. And this needs to be filled up to between the minimum and maximum line at first, for the first part of the experiment. So I'm filling this with, again, deionized water. And if you overfill it, as I just did, take a dropper and bring the liquid level down to between minimum and maximum. And then close it off. There is a threaded lucite plug. And again, fill the other side. There we go. Now, you need to have these hoses come off the back of the electrolysis towers. And this is how you will be collecting hydrogen and oxygen. At this point, for part one of the experiment, we need to start wiring things up. And for that, you follow the wiring diagram in your protocol. To test these, you will need two multimeters. Now, these are actually identical. Both of them work as both voltmeters and ammeters. Just use one for each. Um, this one is set to 20 amps, so I'll use that as an ammeter. And you'll notice that on the front it says A for amps. The other one, when I turn it on, has a V for volts ready for it. I don't pretend to be able to remember the wiring diagram, so we uh, look at it here. Take these wires, which are provided, assuming they're not tangled, that is, and plug them in appropriately. For instance, the first one is the black line from the power supply, goes to the, the red in outlet for the ammeter. That's the 20 amp one, because we'll be going up above 2 amps, so 20 milliamps is not appropriate. It fits in there. This outlet here is the common one, and that works for both um, ammeter and voltmeter. Whoops. Red from the power supply. Make sure you do this properly. Black from the power supply goes to the black of the electrolyzer, and that's right there. I'm not going to support your patience here. You can follow a wiring diagram, so we'll come back when I'm finished. Now that I've got that fully wired up, my next step is to actually turn the power on in the power source. 
and adjust the current, that's these top two knobs, to two amps. And you'll notice that the electrolyzer has started with generating bubbles of gas um, from the electrolytes of water. At the moment, we're venting them to the room. At this point, you need to read voltage and amperage and let them run for the appropriate amount of time and read. The next step tells you to decrease the amps coming from the power supply and do this in about five steps all the way down to zero. So that's about 0.4 of an amp. Decrease this down to about 1.6. Wait for the appropriate amount of time. Once the readings are stable, take a reading of both amps and volts and continue. You, this will take you considerably longer than my demonstration here. One other thing to mention here is the multimeters, which you can probably see here. After about five minutes, the display will power off to save uh, battery. So if it does go blank, just push the power button a couple of times, and the number will come back again. Once you have adjusted this, it needs to go all the way down to zero. But don't forget, you can adjust the fine current adjustment to move a little further down, because you may have this down to zero, but if the fine adjustment is up somewhat, you will be getting some amount of power coming through. Now that I've turned that off, you'll notice we don't have any very much electrolysis happening. We now move on to the second part, where we are going to be um, running gas directly to the electrolytic cell. The first thing to do when you're doing this is just to get rid of all the wiring, turn the power source off, because you will be rewiring, and it's a whole lot easier if you aren't dealing with spaghetti. This next part um, requires some considerable juggling with these. I need to fill these lines, and um, we're going to need to look at it fairly closely. We now have to fill this line with water, and the point of this is to make sure that no air goes into the fuel cell. The trick is to hold the tube very slightly above the horizontal. And using a dropper, fill this up to it on the tower. It actually says gas test. It just means completely full. That is, no air storage at the top. And once I've got this full, it'll start to come out the tip. But I'm also starting to get water appearing here in the tube. And so I continue to fill and keep this quite full and lower my left hand here so that I am filling the tube. Now, be careful. If you lower it too fast, you're going to get air coming in from the other side. Once I have got this almost completely full, I will then be capping using the plexiglass cap. Now, don't try and use a dropper to fill the, the um, tube from this end. You will get bubbles in it. I already thought of that one and failed. So, I've now got the level of the water almost all the way to the end by lowering it slowly. And while I've got it here, I'm going to cap that. I've got a little bit of water coming off and pop it, the neck of the tube, into a beaker full of water. That will prevent any gas from getting in there. And I now have water only in my setup. I'll do that for the other side, and I'll see you in a minute.
I've now wired up this particular apparatus, complete with voltmeters, and we're now incorporating the fuel cell. And this is uh, figure four in your protocol that you set up. The resistance board, and we'll be talking about this in a minute, just plug in appropriately, and so there's no actual resistors in the way here. So there's no resistance from the resistor board, and the electrolyzer has power running from the power supply. At this point, we turn this on, up to two amps, and you'll notice that we're starting to get bubbling. As this happens, we will start to expel the water from these tubes, and once that has happened, and you need to make sure that you don't have any, um, whoops, I'm running out of room here. So the trick is not to get any water into the fuel cell itself. You'll notice that one of these is traveling twice as fast. That's this one over here, which is the hydrogen. Now, once this starts blowing bubbles, that's good. Put this on the top of the fuel cell. There we go. Make sure there's no moisture there. And again, connect it up. There we go. Close that off. Now, what I have got happening here is oxygen and hydrogen being produced. I'm not measuring the amount, but instead I'm feeding oxygen and hydrogen into the fuel cell, which is, in fact, converting them back to water again. And if I turn my meters back on, they've managed to power themselves off. I'm now getting readings with no load on the resistance. I let this sit for about five minutes, and then I will start putting um, resistors in place on the board. One also thing to mention, uh, at some point you may end up with a little extra pressure happening here, and one of the tubes pops off. Don't be alarmed, just put it straight back, and all will be well. Now, let me talk now about the resistor board. We have here a circuit board and a collection of resistors here. This one is 5 ohms, this one is 2 ohms. Um, the first thing you're going to do after letting it run for a while to um, condition the system is, if I plug this, is 2 ohms. Now, at the moment, this is a straight circuit through with no resistance. When I want to switch to 2 ohms, I pick up this cord and do that. It is now running through 2 ohms of resistance. There are ways and combinations of increasing this. At uh, one point, you need to have 28, I believe, ohms. In that case, 10 plus 10. And then, whoops, where's my 5? 5 ohms, we're up to 25, 27, 28. And so by putting that here, I'm now running through 28 ohms of resistance in series. You add them when you're running in series. Now, at some point, you also need to have smaller resistances. And you do that by putting them in parallel. For instance, we're dealing with 0.83 of an ohm. And to do that, you put one in parallel with five. So if I can find my five ohm resistor, putting them in parallel like that, and putting this electrode here, the power is running through those two resistors in parallel. And that'll give me a, res a load of 0 0.83 of an ohm. You should be reading these for the appropriate amount of time um, allowed for in the protocol. Once you, whoops, that's exactly what happens when we get some popping. Just put it straight back on. 
for the next portion of the experiment, we're going to be collecting um, electrolyzed gas. And we actually collect using a gasometer here. Now, one of these is already full, and the other one is empty. I have no idea how you will find it. If you find them full, and this tube here is full of water, then your, this particular side is ready to go. This one empty needs to be filled. I'm actually using deionized. You don't really need it because this water never comes into contact with the electrolytic cell. However, if we pour this in, what I am trying to do here is fill this Erlenmeyer flask. The gas will actually when produced, will come in through here, be stored in the Erlenmeyer flask, and the water inside it will be displaced up into these reservoirs, and we'll be able to read how much volume has been produced. We need a little bit more water there. The idea is actually to have this empty, this tube full. And I usually need to overfill it a bit. It'll start bleeding out of this container here. So I need to drain this down to the bottom. There we go. Easy thing to do is first of all pinch it with your fingers and then apply the pinch clamp by tightening it. And this is now ready to receive gas as we electrolyze. Now that you've got the gasometers ready, what I did not show you was refilling these tubes with water just as we did before because we do need to make sure that we don't have any um, other gases like air in there. Uh, this, and I've also wired up the voltmeter and ammeter um, according to wiring diagram number one. Turn this on and use about one amp of power and we'll again electrolyzing water and generating the two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. And what will, of course, start happening is it's going to dispo, di displace rather the liquid in these tubes. Now, the first one to be displaced is hydrogen because it's going to produce more. What I'm going to do then is attach these tubes to one of the gasometers. So that I will store hydrogen in one and oxygen in the other. As soon as you attach it, you'll need to open this. Otherwise, we'll develop a high pressure situation here. We've got the level of the hydrogen coming down here. And as soon as it starts blowing bubbles, we'll be ready to go. Okay, a couple of bubbles coming out there. So we've now got just hydrogen coming through. Come here and put it on here and immediately open this up. What is now going to happen is hydrogen, as produced by the electrolytic cell, is going to start displacing the water in here and filling up this gasometer. Meanwhile, oxygen only half as fast because only one mole of oxygen for every two moles of hydrogen is coming along. And we're almost blowing bubbles here. And now oxygen is blowing bubbles, so it's ready to pick this up, attach onto the hose clamp here, and then immediately open this clamp here. So we now have oxygen blowing into this gasometer and it will start pushing the water up into the reservoir. You're going to need a stopwatch, which we've got here. And the liquid level is just approaching the 25 mil line. It's not an exact science. This is not burette reading accuracy here, but uh, you do want to be as close as you reasonably can be. And that looks about 25, so I start timing. And I will time how long it takes to generate 25 mils of hydrogen at whatever the amperage is. 
And I do that three times, and then once I get to 100, I increase the amperage going through and time the next three times 25 mil units, and then increase a third time. And that is basically part C of the experiment. However, once you have done that, you will need to keep going because you need to generate about 250 mils, as much as you can, of both hydrogen and oxygen. And you'll know that when the liquid gets up to that level. We've got about uh, 250 mils of water available in the Erlenmeyer flask, which is the gas storage unit. Because hydrogen is being produced twice as fast as oxygen, it'll take a little while longer than you think it should because oxygen has to catch up. You, you need an equal amount of oxygen for the te next test. When this is full, what will happen is you will start getting bubbles of hydrogen gas coming off as it gets up to its maximum storage capacity underneath. It'll start blowing bubbles. Don't be alarmed by this. It will continue. So at this point, you would continue to produce hydrogen and oxygen until both of these gasometers are full of hydrogen or oxygen, timing how long each 25 mil takes for the hydrogen production as a function of amperage. Part D of the experiment, we are measuring the efficiency of the fuel cell. You notice we've got gas sitting in the gasometers ready to be used. It is plumbed into the fuel cell itself with hydrogen going into the red side of the fuel cell, oxygen going into the black side of the fuel cell. The electrical cords are all linked up as you see in circuit diagram number four. And at this point, I've got a one ohm resistor on it. The first thing I need to do before we start taking measurements, would be a good idea if my uh, ammeter and voltmeter were actually displaying things, is to purge. And you need 25 mils of gas to purge the fuel cell each time. And we'll be doing the purge by opening these valves at the bottom to allow the gas to escape. At the moment, I've got them pinched tight. So that these are quite tight. And that's how they stay while the fuel cell is actually operating. At this point, I can now open the gas tube. So this is now oxygen running to this. And I'm going to do run 25 mils approximately through. So I pinch the lower tube shut with my finger, open this, and then using my fingers as the control, allow gas to flow out until I get to about the next 25 mil line and pinch with my fingers and then make that closure permanent with the clamp. I'm going to do the same thing now with the hydrogen. And this is the side you need to be actually looking at carefully. Oxygen will just follow along. You're actually measuring the hydrogen side. Open this here. And then again, pinching the top closed, the, the exhaust tube closed, I open the valve and allow it to flow out until almost the next line, maybe a couple of mils before that. Pinch it tight and then let go. Now, this fuel cell is now running. It is generating electricity, as you can see on the voltmeter and ammeter. I must have hooked them up backwards because I'm getting negative numbers there. But again, when you get to 25 mils, then you need to start timing and read at the beginning and at the end. And you do it for 25 mils of hydrogen. And when you get to the end of 25 mils of hydrogen, then stop everything down by tightening these uh, clamps here. And then be prepared to flush. Flush for another 25 mils. And then 
for the second reading, change the one ohm resistor into a two ohm resistor, and you'll find that the time it takes will change. And then for the next 25 mils, read the volts and amps as the hydrogen discharges and is electrolyzed back in the fuel cell. And then after 25 mils with a two amp resistor, again, flush both sides, oxygen and hydrogen, and take another 25 mil reading back again with one. So alternate one ohm and two ohms and flushing, observing the volts and amps, the beginning and the end. And that is more or less how you do the electrolysis of water experiment. At some point during the experiment, you don't need to do this at any given point, but at some point, you'll need to know what the temperature and pressure is today in the lab. This device here will work. Just push the button here. And once it has warmed up, it will give you what's in here. Now, this says that the pressure in here is 1,001.1 millibars. And pushing further buttons will scroll through the information you need. It's 22.9 Celsius in here today. And when you're done, don't forget to turn it off. Alternatively, if you don't want something that needs two AA batteries, always hanging here on the wall, we have a thermometer that'll give you the day's temperature. And there's a barometer here as well. Tap it to make sure that the needle is in the correct place. You read the blue needle. The outer dial is millimeters of mercury in terms of pressure. And just convert that back to the appropriate units of pressure for today in the lab.